A very good evening students and welcome to Yup Master. These are our online platform classes where I am going to be teaching you all about the NEAT program. Now, we have started with the chapter of cockroach and in the cockroach we have discussed until now all the external features of cockroach, the external morphology. We also went ahead and we, uh, we discussed about the digestive system. Now, let's go ahead and let us get into the whole circulatory system of this cockroach. Okay, now before we start anything, just for you to remember, very important terminologies which are going to be used from the beginning till the end of this chapter. I'd like to revise that. Okay, first of all, you have to remember that the scientific name for cockroach was called as Periplanata Americana. Please children, for your MCQs, you knowing this terminology of the scientific name that is Periplanata Americana. This is very, very, very important, okay? Because when they ask MCQs, MCQs basically they don't mention cockroach. What is it that they mention? They're going to be mentioning only the word Periplanata. So you have to remember the scientific name of the cockroach that we are going to be studying. All right. Now ahead we are going to be seeing that when we talk about this circulatory system, remember this is an arthropod and all the insects or all the animals beginning be belonging to the phylum of arthropod are going to be having an open circulatory system. All right. Open circulatory system means that the circulating fluid, which we can call as blood, is actually going to be filling the whole body cavity and whatever body organs and whatever body tissues are inside the system inside the organ of the body or inside the organism that is completely bathed in blood all right so remember it is an open type of circulatory system now before we go into that and we would also you also need to know that while studying the circulatory system we see that the whole body cavity is going to be divided into certain regions okay so before we get into that let us just revise what were the exoskeletons of the cockroach so that when its terminologies are going to be used they become a little bit easier okay so remember the exoskeleton of this cockroach was made up of a polysaccharide and that polysaccharide was called as chitin i hope you all remember this that it is a polysaccharide which is called as chitin now remember that chitin that same chitin layer on the dorsal surface is given a different name on the ventral surface is given a different name and even for the lateral surfaces okay so now why are these names given differently why isn't it just called exoskeleton chitin everywhere because when we want to study the different structures of the body of the cockroach when we want to know the attachments of different levels like in our last lecture when we studied the external part we saw that the wings are attached to the dorsal chitin the legs are attached to the ventral part and that is why we have gone ahead and we've labeled the dorsal exoskeleton we have labeled differently the ventral exoskeleton so let's revise what those names were so that when we go ahead and when we study about the heart those labelings become much easier for us all right so over here when we talk about the exoskeleton that is chitin we see that remember this was the dorsal part and it was called as the dorsal tergum and this was the ventral part and that part was called as the ventral sternum okay the ventral sternum okay and these here were the lateral parts and those were called as the lateral pleuron so remember this word and when we're talking about the circulatory system i'd like you to remember especially this part here and that part is called as the dorsal tergum okay so shall we begin talking about this circulatory system as i told you initially that it is an arthropod and all arthropods have an open or it can be called as a lacunar type of circulatory system okay now we see here that talking about the whole body cavity of the cockroach it is called as a hemocele now break this word up hemocele seal indicates coelom means a cavity which is going to be filled with blood hence the word heme so that's why the body cavity is going to be called as hemocele whereas when we talk about the body fluid that is filling that whole body cavity it's going to be called as hemolymph now 
why isn't it just called as blood we can call it as blood no harm in calling it as blood but whenever we think of the word blood we always think of something which is red in color don't we but when we see the blood of the cockroach it does not have that pigment which makes blood red in color now that that might bring you to the question that what is the pigment that makes our blood red in color can i say it is hemoglobin yes so hemoglobin is a pigment which is giving that red color to our blood cockroaches don't have hemoglobin and that is why their blood is not red in color in fact their blood is white in color if you remember a fluid in our body a circulating fluid in our body which is white in color is going to be given the name of lymph okay so that is exactly why even because the circulating fluid of the cockroach because that is also white in color we can go ahead and instead of calling it as blood all the time we may give it the name as hemo lymph why hemo lymph because it is white in color okay that is the blood which is white in color so you call it as hemo lymph all right so body cavity is called as hemocele whereas the circulating fluid inside it is going to be called as hemo lymph okay now what exactly is the function of hemo lymph over here hemo lymph does the transferring once i told you that there is no what did i say there is no pigment which pigment is not there the pigment called as hemoglobin hemoglobin okay is not present so this is actually hemoglobin in our body is not only doing the work of giving color to the blood it is doing a much more important work and that is it is going to do the work of carrying oxygen but that is for us that is for our body cockroaches don't have hemoglobin at all so basically we can say that because they don't have this pigment because they don't have hemoglobin this is indicating that the blood of the cockroach is going to absolutely have no role play in exchange of gases okay so in our body our circulating fluid is playing a very important role in transfer in transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout our whole body i hope you agree with me in our body lungs are just taking air in but then that oxygen to make it reach to your toes who is responsible blood is responsible why because blood has a respiratory pigment called as hemoglobin but the cockroaches do not have this hemoglobin and if they don't have that hemoglobin then this means that blood is the the rest, the circulating fluid of cockroach is not going to be transporting any oxygen any carbon dioxide it has no role play in exchange of gases so if it's not doing any work in exchange of gases what exactly is it doing that brings us to our point here that hemoglo hemo lymph of the cockroach does the work of transporting yes it does do transport but of what it will be doing the work of transportation of nutrients of wastes and of hormones so can you see over here that here blood is having no role play in exchange of gases so it does not exchange any gases please remember this this is a very important time point okay now coming ahead when we talk about the circulatory system we need to know that in that one system what exactly are the different parts that we are going to be study okay so our approach to any system will first deal with the parts that we're going to be studying about it like in the last lecture when we learned about the digestive system do you remember the three parts of the digestive system of the cockroach there was a foregut it was called as the stomodium there was a midgut it was called as the mesenteron and then there was the hindgut it was called as the proctodium okay so now when we come to the circulatory system of the cockroach there are uh, there are uh, parts that we're going to be studying it as okay so the three main parts which are associated with this circulatory system are first beginning with the hemocele what was the hemocele hemocele was exactly that body cavity in which the heart will be in which all the different organs will be placed rather you can say it is the body cavity in which the whole circulating fluid is going to be flowing inside okay 
then we're going to have the heart and finally we will be talking about the blood or the circulating fluid of the cockroach okay so these are the main three parts of the circulatory system which we are going to be covering today all right now we're going to begin this whole session of the circulatory system by speaking about the hemocele now you remember hemocele was just another name for the whole body cavity because it is going to be filled with blood or the circulating fluid of the cockroach okay now look at this diagram this is a very important diagram you need to know and if you understand this diagram the circulation of the cockroach becomes very simple okay so let's pay attention to this diagram let's label it together all right first of all this whole outline that you are seeing okay let's make this session a little colorful so this whole outline that you're seeing over here is the whole hemocele okay means this is the whole body wall you can say of the cockroach and the whole cavity whatever is inside this is what we're going to be calling as the hemocele okay now in this whole region we can see that there are two septums okay what exactly is a septum septum is a separation okay like for us in our body in your nose there is a septum over here what is that septum doing it's just dividing that part into a right and left side right so every septum will do the work of dividing so in the body of the cockroach or rather in the hemocele of the cockroach okay this can come as a short note so please remember this okay very important even for board exams as a short note and even for Uh, important for your neat exams as the hemocele now here when we talk about this whole part we have that there are two septums and also i'd like you to see that the septums are perforated okay whatever septa we are going to be seeing they are perforated septa so where are they let's see here one septa over here one septum here this is a septum right here okay and then there is another one below over here So now what is happening is because of the presence of two of them okay remember this part here is the dorsal part okay and this part here is the ventral part okay dorsal and ventral part now when we see over here both of these these are the septa and if the septa is there it's going to be separating two different parts now because of the presence of two septa can we see that there are three chambers formed okay this is the first chamber this is the second chamber and this is the third chamber okay now can i say that these three chambers okay let's just label them this is the first one i'll color it with a red color right here okay this is the first uppermost chamber which is the dorsal part okay then second we have in the middle region right here okay so i'll just color that in yellow and this is that middle part okay the middle chamber and finally in uh, the lower most ventral side over here i'll color this with blue all right now why have i done this because all these three different regions okay all these three different areas which i have mentioned are actually going to be having different body systems in them okay so let's go ahead and see which part is having which system so we begin with the first part here this part right here okay this is the chamber or rather than a chamber i'll go ahead and since this is a small cavity small cavity can be given the word of sinus all right so if we over here the uppermost part here is called as a sinus okay now which sinus is this this is the dorsal sinus all right and i will go ahead and tell you which body part is found over here it is none other than the heart so when we see in this dorsal sinus we see that the heart is the part or heart is the organ which is occupying that dorsal sinus that's why that sinus it is all around the heart since it is all around remember a word that we have learned for all around all around was also called as peri okay all around was called as peri and all around the heart so children may i call this as pericardial okay it is called as peri 
कार्डियल साइनस और इन सिंपल वर्ड्स यू मे कॉल इट एज द डॉसल साइनस ऑल राइट नाउ आफ्टर द डॉसल साइनस कम्स दिस परफोरेटेड सेप्टम ओके Why is it perforated? In order to allow substances to pass through it. Okay, so that first uppermost perforated septum is going to be called as this here is called as the dorsal dorsal septum. Okay, then after that the next chamber. Okay, this is the chamber which is going to be having. most of the internal visceral organs visceral organs means the important organs inside the body internal means you can say organs of the reproductive system all the organs of the digestive system so the body's main viscera is located in this middle part okay so that middle part can since it is carrying all the viscera and it is a sinus which is all around the visceral organs that part can be called as all around means peri and all around what all around the visceral organs so you can call it as peri visceral sinus okay either you call it as peri visceral sinus or you may call it as the middle sinus okay and finally under that in this the the ventral most region this is the part where the whole nervous system of the cockroach is going to be lying okay so over here hence this can be called as the it can either be called as the ventral sinus okay or because it is all around the nervous system of the cockroach we may also call it as all around means peri and because around the nervous system it can be called as peri neural okay it may be called as peri neural sinus okay all right so now one more thing we have to see that between the visceral the periviscal sinus and the perineural sinus also there was a septum and this septum over here can be called as the ventral septum okay either you can call it as ventral septum or instead of septum you may also use the word diaphragm more more commonly over here it is called as the dorsal diaphragm just like how in between our thoracic and abdominal cavity there is a diaphragm separating the two same way over here also instead of septum you may call it as ventral diaphragm all right so with the help of two diaphragms the dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm the whole body cavity that is the whole hemocele can be separated into three regions okay the dorsal sinus the visceral the middle sinus and the ventral sinus we may call them as the pericardial sinus the periviscal sinus and the perineural sinus based upon the organs inside there okay so there are two remember this here there are two perforated septa one is called as the dorsal diaphragm and second is called as the ventral diaphragm okay now when we talk about this hemocele here okay there are all right the hemocele here we saw those three uh, sinuses over here the dorsal or the pericardial okay that is the one which has the heart that's why it's called as cardiac middle the periviscal is the one which has all the visceral organs and the third one ventral perineural and that's why it is called it is having the ventral nerve cord that's why it's called as perineural sinus okay so that is summing up all that you need to know about the hemocele of the cockroach okay now remember when we said that while talking about the circulatory system of the cockroach we need to remember three important parts one the hemocele second the heart and third the circulating fluid that is blood or hemolymph okay so now after hemocele let us move on to the next part and that is the heart now the heart of the cockroach where is it located yes remember that first sinus it was called as the pericardial sinus and that sinus is the it's called as pericardial because it contains the heart the heart of the cockroach is a very unique heart how many chambers do we have in our heart do you know that we have four chambers but what about the cockroach the cockroach has a bigger heart than you and me did you know that in fact 
the cockroach has a heart which is ranging right from its head to toe where is your heart in just a small region so the cockroach has a much bigger heart than all of us okay and how many chambers that big heart has actually 13 chambers in it okay so we see here when we talk about the heart of the cockroach over here in this diagram which exactly is the heart well the whole region that you're seeing from here to here right where my line is passing right here all the way till the end this whole thing this whole two th this this whole chamber that you're seeing here these are the chambers of the heart and this exactly is the heart can you see how the heart is actually running right from the anterior most part of the cockroach all the way up till the posterior most end of the cockroach all right so that is the whole distance of the heart running there all right now we see here that the heart of the cockroach it is elongated it is muscular and obviously it is going to be placed in which sinus of the hemocele it is in the pericardial sinus okay also we see that when the heart has to contract okay whenever the heart is going to be contracting so that blood can circulate it is always going to be flowing from the posterior most end till the anterior most end okay also remember one thing that over here the heart is a tubular organ okay the shape of it it is tubular and whenever you have alternate contractions and relaxations taking place in a tubular organ that is always going to be called as peristalsis okay so in a tubular organ alternate contractions and relaxations are going to be called as peristalsis so here also when we're talking about the blood and the heart of the cockroach whenever it is going to contract so that blood can flow we see that the contractions or the flow of blood will always flow from posterior end till the anterior end and then it will circulate inside okay so we see that blood flows from posterior to anterior direction and because it is contractions happening in a tubular organ we will call it as peristalsis okay all right so that was peristalsis also one thing here this heart of the cockroach is not like what we have in our heart the heart or the cardiac muscles itself are responsible for generating the impulse so when our heart is actually contracting and relaxing the brain is not sending any impulse for it to contract and relax but the heart is going to be creating its own impulse and whenever this kind of heart is seen where the impulse is created by the muscles of the heart itself that kind of heart is called as tell me what is it called as it's called as a myogenic heart okay but that is for humans okay myogenic heart is for humans but when we talk about the cockroach its heart is contracting too but who is it that's making its heart contract it's the nervous system yes it is those neurons or it is that nervous system the nerves which are going to extend from that nervous system from that when the nerve cord and it will reach the heart all the chambers of the heart and cause it to contract so that's why because the nervous system is going to be controlling the heart of the cockroach that's why this kind of heart is said to be a neurogenic heart why neurogenic because neuro for nervous system and genic because the impulse is going to be generated with the help of the nervous system over here genic means for generated okay genic stands for generated but when we talk about myogenic in humans it is the muscle which is causing the generation of the nerve of the cardiac impulse that's why this is called as myogenic for humans okay all right now what we see over here when we're talking about this whole region okay as we see that blood is going to be flowing okay now i said that the blood is white in color let me color it yellow for you okay now when we talk about that part it's going to be flowing right from posterior end all the way up okay so when blood is flowing 
with the help of peristaltic movements blood flows upwards 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 and blood is ultimately going to extend and enter into this region right here and that region is going to be called as none other than it's going to be called as the aorta so it is this aorta region into which blood is going to enter okay now where does this aorta open this aorta is going to be opening at the level of the head okay so it's opening at the level of the head of the cockroach so this means that blood right from this last chamber with the help of peristaltic movements is actually going to go and first all of that blood will enter into the head of the cockroach and then it will be circulated throughout the whole body okay so now let's see ahead what is happening so you see that how the first chamber if this is the 13th chamber then you can see how the first chamber is opening into this tube right here and that part is going to be called as the aorta so this right here is the aorta which is going to open at the level of the head okay now look at this part here over here exactly you can see how the chambers are okay very clearly right from the 13th chamber all the way up you can see how the chambers are okay and blood also whenever the heart will contract blood is also going to be flowing exactly in this direction right from the posterior till the anterior most chamber okay so here the blood goes all the way up till the first chamber and after the first chamber children remember it is the aorta where does the aorta open aorta opens at the region of the head now also one more thing i'd like you to see over here that each chamber okay over here if at all i take each chamber and if i just open it here okay let's say i just consider these three chambers this is the third this is the fourth and if this is the fifth chamber all right this is just an expanded version of those chambers all right let's say this is third chamber fourth chamber and fifth chamber now over here can you see in each chamber okay there is a pair of openings can you see those openings there okay so we'll just mark it here again i'll use the yellow color where you can see how blood can flow inside okay so can you see how blood is able to go inside all right so these are just openings over here which will allow blood to enter inside this region all right so there are a pair of openings now where how, how are these openings placed let's see that when you talk about only this one chamber okay in this one chamber this is the anterior part this is the posterior part okay so talking about this one chamber only then even in this one chamber this is going to be the anterior part okay and this over here is going to be the posterior part okay that is that covers up anterior and posterior now if at all i draw a line i'll draw it with a green color if at all i draw a line right here can i say that this line is running medially okay it is running medially that is it is running through the center if that line is called as the medial line then what about its these parts over here what will these ends called be called as those parts are going to be called as the lateral parts okay they're going to be called as the lateral ends and we see here that at these two ends now can i say that these openings through which blood is able to flow into okay those openings through which blood is going to be able to flow into are both of these right here sum it sum it up together they are posteriorly placed and they are laterally placed so can i call those openings as posterolateral openings yes these are posterolateral openings and they are called as ostium or you may call them as ostia so we see here that each chamber has a pair of remember this word here each chamber has a pair of posterolateral openings and that posterolateral opening is called as ostia so we see each of the chambers are having this ostia and children the ostia are able to either remain open or remain closed when the ostia open that time blood can flow in and when the ostia closes when will the ostia close ostia will naturally close 
whenever the whole chamber will be filled with blood so when the when the whole chamber is filled with blood that's what's going to make this ostia actually close over here okay all right so this is closing of the ostia now every chamber is going to open into the other present in front of it through these valvular openings so let's see what that is all about now we see here that if blood is already here in the fourth chamber then that blood whenever the heart is undergoing peristaltic movements that blood will flow upwards okay remember blood always flows through peristalsis from the posterior to the anterior so here also when the fourth chamber fifth chamber when there will be contraction everywhere blood has a tendency to flow to its upper or upper chamber and that too it is not ever going to flow backwards why and how is backward flow prevented because of the presence of valves over there okay so the valves present over there are going to make sure that once blood is filled into the heart that ostia closes and when the ostia closes that's when the heart will start to contract when the heart will contract blood will flow from posterior to anterior part and the presence of these valves are going to prevent the back flow okay so valves over there prevents the back flow so the valvular openings are present there okay all right now ahead we see when we talk about the heart it is 13 chambered okay now in these 13 chambers let's identify first of all this over here this part here this is the head of the cockroach right next part we see when we want to talk about the thorax region of the cockroach then this over here this is the first segment of the thorax what was it called as it was called as the prothoracic part okay then this was called as the mesothorax this here mesothorax okay and the third part here this was what we called as the metathorax okay so here we have three parts here the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax and talking about the abdomen abdomen region had all the different segments how many do you remember there were 10 different segments there were 10 segments of the abdomen all which are covered right here okay so this part here is showing the abdomen the blue colored part now talking about the chambers and their location i told you how many chambers there are there are 13 chambers now in these 13 chambers how are they distributed well you can say for every segment there is one chamber 3 and 10 segments and 13 chambers yes so we see that there is one chamber per segment which means that there are going to be total 3 thoracic chambers and 10 abdominal chambers okay so that's the whole thing the distribution of the different chambers or one seg one chamber per segment okay now look at this diagram all right it might look a little scary when you see it for the first time but it's going to be very simple okay now what do you have to see here first and foremost let us see the body parts okay this is the dorsal part okay if this here is the dorsal part this can i call this as the dorsal tergum okay that is the dorsal tergum then this here is going to be called as the ventral part and it is the ventral sternum okay so here we have the dorsal tergum all right and then below here you have the ventral part and that is called as the ventral sternum okay now let's locate the parts inside there all right inside you have this as the first diaphragm and that diaphragm is what we call as the dorsal diaphragm then below there is one more diaphragm that diaphragm is what's going to be called as the ventral diaphragm and let's see other structures talking over here this is the pericardial sinus so this right here is the heart of the cockroach okay that's the heart of the cockroach now what do we see ahead over here we see that there is the presence of all of these small muscles can you see these structures here can you see these structures okay these triangular shaped structures are present can you see how those structures are actually going to be connected at one end with the heart and the the top part and the bottom part the anterior part and the posterior part are connected to the can you see how one part is connected to the dorsal tergum yes so can you see this part of the muscle 
is connected to the dorsal tergum. The second part, the end of the muscle, attachment of the muscle is at the dorsal diaphragm. Okay, so that's how you see that these muscles which are near the heart, those muscles near the heart are going to be called as the allery muscles. Okay, and allery muscles, where from where are they ranging up to? They start with, they start at the dorsal tergum. Okay, they start at the dorsal tergum and they are inserted at the level of the dorsal diaphragm okay now we see that it is these muscles which are actually going to be around the heart and how are they around the heart let's see over there look at this right here these muscles that you're seeing in this region okay this part right here these here these are what we saw as the allery muscles okay now these allery muscles are going to be attached from dorsal tergum till the dorsal diaphragm and they're going to be surrounding the heart why so that they can contract and help the heart in its peristaltic movements yes the heart of the cockroach is muscular but along with the muscles of the heart they also require a little bit of assistance. they need some help too so these allery muscles are actually going to help that heart to contract now what is the placement of these allery muscles? Let's go ahead and see that. Okay. Placement of these allery muscles, you can see that these muscles are placed between two chambers. So here if there is one chamber, the first and the second chamber, between these two chambers, there is one pair of allery muscles. So that's why we see here that this pair of allery muscles between two chambers. So there are total of how many chambers? total of 13 chambers that means that there's going to be total number of 12 pairs of allery muscles between 13 chambers if there are only if the if there is one pair between two chambers that means that there's going to be a total of 12 pairs of allery muscles what are these going to do and where are they located remember that it is located from the dorsal tergum till the dorsal diaphragm okay also we see that the heart wall which is pulsating the pulsation is because of the assistment assistment that the heart is getting along with these allery muscles okay so that was all about the allery muscles so we're done with what are what all parts have we covered until now we've covered the hemocele we've covered the heart too in the heart we also learned about the chambers we learned about the allery muscles too now let's come to the third part and that part is what we're going to be calling as the circulating fluid of the cockroach or you may also call it as the hemolymph okay now hemolymph as i told you in the beginning of this lecture is not going to be red in color why isn't it red in color because it does not have that respiratory pigment which is called as hemoglobin okay that's why it is left off with a white color okay and that's why we're going to be calling it as the hemolymph okay why because lymph is a white color in our body because their circulating fluid is white we're going to be calling it as hemolymph okay now what exactly is the blood of the cockroach made up of now i'll tell you that although they don't have hemoglobin okay that is a difference from our blood but otherwise the basic fun the, the basic fundamental of it being a circulating fluid is quite similar in the sense that even their circulating fluid have got a liquid part and a solid part okay also their circulating fluid also just like our circulating fluid has some functions too and what are they let's see that the circulating fluid is made up of a liquid part which is called as the plasma okay so plasma over here is the liquid part of its blood okay and the solid part of its blood are the blood corpuscles the blood cells and since they are blood cells they can be called as hemocytes hemo generally means standing for blood and site which would mean cell okay so these are the cells these are the solid parts of the blood now plasma you know it is the fluid okay now when i talk about hemocytes we in our blood we have got rbcs we have got wbcs and we have platelets too okay now in the in the blood of the cockroach as i told you that 
blood is not going to play any role in exchange of gases. So, the work that an RBC is doing in our body, it's not there only. They will have a different system for taking care of that part. So, they don't have RBCs. Then what cells do they have? They have cells called as hemocytes. What is the main function of this hemocyte going to do? These are the cells which are going to be behaving like the WBCs of our body. So this means that these are cells which are helping in their defense mechanisms. And those hemocytes are, look at the count of them, per cubic millimeter of blood, there are around 30,000 hemocytes present. Okay, in the cockroach. Now, in our blood, if you see, there is around um, the normal WBC count, if you're going to see, around 4,000 to 9,000. But for these cockroaches, this is the only cell that's present in their blood. And there is around 30,000 blood cells, hemocytes, present per cubic millimeter of blood. What is the basic function of those cells? They're behaving like WBCs. Defense means they're going to do phagocytosis. So you can say that they are phagocytic in action. What is the meaning of phagocytic? Phago means eating. Cytic means the cell. So this is basically coming from the word which is called as phago. It's called as phagocytosis. Okay. Break this word up. Phagocytosis word, if you're going to break it up, Phago means eat, okay, cyto means cell, and cis means a state, all right. So, this basically means a state in which that cell is able to eat up any foreign substance that's going to come inside the body. So, any foreign substance like, like let's say there is a foreign particle like a bacteria or anything that this cockroach has eaten up. You know that the cockroach is able to eat in anything and everything. If there is any sort of bacteria which has entered into the body of the cockroach, then it is this very cell, that hemocyte, which can go and take care of it. How? By going and engulfing it, by going and eating it up, which we are going to be calling as phagocytosis that is phagocytic in action okay so that's the basic fun that's the basic uh, structure of the circulating fluid made up of two components the plasma and the hemocytes okay now also we see here just uh, like how we saw here that there is no respiratory pigment we spoke about that a little while back there is no hemoglobin and that is why blood has absolutely no role in respiration okay blood has no role in respiration but what exactly are the functions of blood let's see that here there's no more role in respiration but they do have functions we saw some basic functions at the beginning of the lecture where i told you that blood does the work of transportation of what nutrition wastes hormones so let's see that in detail over here okay First of all, blood is going to do a very important work that whatever substances this cockroach is eating, like what when we saw in the digestive system in the last lecture, whatever is going to be eaten will eventually be absorbed. And after it is going to be absorbed, that absorbed food material, the simplified form of flu food has to go and reach to each and every cell of the body of the cockroach. That's why it's eating. Why? For energy. So as everything has been broken down and it has been absorbed in that in the ventriculous part of the intestine, then where is it going to go? It's eventually from the digestive system, all of those small nutrients will get collected in the circulating fluid. And from that circulating fluid, it is going to go to the heart and the heart will make it reach to all the different body cells. Okay, so first important function is that whatever is the digestive food, it will be transported to all the different cells of the body by none other than the circulating fluid that is the hemolymph. Second, the nitrogenous waste materials, whatever nitrogenous waste materials have been collected from the whole body. Each and every cell will be producing its own nitrogenous waste from all different parts. Nitrogenous waste materials will be collected. Now, it is the work of this circulating fluid to collect the nitrogenous waste from all the different parts of the body 
and it where will it take it do you remember in the digestive system we have learned which part of the digestive system is responsible for excretion remember that it was called as what would you what did we call it as we call that part as the red with blue we call that as the malpighian we call it as the malpighian tubules okay so it is the function of the blood to carry all that nitrogenous waste from all the different parts of the body all the way and taking it towards the malpighian tubules where are these located and how many were there remember in our last lecture we learned about this these were first of all remember that these were all 150 are you able to see that yellow color there or i'll write it in red okay so there were 150 tubules okay they were 150 they were yellow in color okay they were yellow in color and they are going to be doing the work of taking out the excretory products and what is that excretory product it is none other than uric acid okay so the work of taking all of that excretory waste to the malpighian body is the work of the circulating fluid third remember it has it has those hemocytes what's the function of hemocyte it would be the defensive function so it carries those defensive phagocytes to the places of infection so if at all there is any foreign substance in the body if at all there is any bacterial or viral if there is any infection in the body then any inflammation in the body of the cockroach yes just like our wbcs work similarly even in the cockroach those wbcs will work and they will go and fight that infection located there okay all right now ahead we also see that these are going to be helping in transporting any secretions of the glands okay now children if at all you have any doubts while this lecture is going on you can post it right now in the live chat i'm standing right here and we can solve them together that is tell me any doubts about the circulating circulatory system of the cockroach okay all right so let's continue over here when we talk about the blood the fourth function now you know that the cockroach is also going to be having glands which will do the work of secreting now i told you that the cockroaches have hormones too okay so just like us even the cockroaches are having hormones now who's going to be carrying those hormones to their target organ maybe the hormone might be secreted from one part of the body but it has to work on another part of the body altogether who's going to be carrying it none other than the blood so that is the fourth function of blood over here that it will transport secretions of the ductless glands now ductless glands means the glands which are going to secrete what secrete hormones glands which will secrete hormones are the ductless glands because ductless glands are the ones which have their secretions to be traveling to a different location in the body okay so that's why the circulating fluid is the one which will help it travel from one place of the body to a different location so these here are the different functions of blood one digestion second uh, nitrogenous waste means excretion third phagocytosis in for infection and fourth carrying of the hormones all right now we come next since we have done we are done with the all the different parts of the circulatory system we are done with the uh, the heart the hemocele we're done with the circulating fluid that is hemolymph now we come up to how exactly in the body of the cockroach does the circulation mechanism take place okay now for studying this mechanism of circulation let's just revise this whole hemocele structure once okay so when we're talking about the hemocele remember there were three sinuses okay i don't want you to forget the names of those sinuses first sinus over here okay let's is this color better if i write it in dark blue okay the first uppermost sinus okay that is going to enclose the heart so we called that sinus as the pericardial pericardial sinus right the second the middle sinus has all the viscera of the body so we went ahead and we called this as the periviscerous 
peri visceral sinus and third the lower most one the one placed ventrally that is what we will be going to be calling as the peri neural peri neural sinus okay so this is the way we have the three sinuses now these three sinuses are separated with the help of two septa these septa if you remember they were perforated septa and this was called as the dorsal diaphragm and this here was called as the ventral diaphragm okay so you have the dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm now over here we see how we're going to see now how the circulation actually take place now do you all agree with me that the heart is going to be right here so let me first draw here the heart so let's see this is all the 13 chambers of the heart okay now as soon as the heart is going to be filled with blood how is the heart filled with blood how does blood enter into the heart remember those posterior lateral openings they were called as ostia well blood enters through the ostia and as the chambers are filled with blood as all 13 chambers get filled with blood the ostia will close the minute the ostia closes the heart is muscular itself and with the help of the allery muscles the heart will begin to contract and when the heart contracts blood will start flowing remember tubular organ so the contraction of this tubular organ it will be called as peristalsis and when peristalsis happens the blood is going to be flowing from the posterior chamber till the anterior most chamber and after it enters into the anterior chamber it will then enter into the aorta and all of that blood will first occupy the head of the cockroach and that's why this whole region will be called as the head sinus okay this whole region over here is going to be occupied by blood and it will be called as the head sinus now from the head naturally all the blood cannot accommodate in the head so as the blood keeps on flowing inside the head the blood will eventually come and enter into these two sinuses first it will occupy into the perivisceral sinus also the blood will come down and occupy itself into the perineural sinus and all of these both of these sinuses are going to be filled with that blood and hence all the parts in these sinuses will receive that blood okay remember this is blood coming directly from the heart so this is the blood which is going to be containing all the nutrients so all the different organs in these chambers will be receiving those nutrients okay then what happens remember in this chamber or in, or in this chamber there is the digestive system and over here there will be more absorption taking place so now from here those absorbed substances will come back into the blood okay so from here absorbed substances will enter into the blood okay and the blood will contain all those nutrients now all the nutrients are going to eventually along with blood go upwards and the blood will now come back into this sinus right here which is the pericardial sinus and eventually it will enter back into the heart so this is how the whole circulation system took place can we make a chart out of it yes so let's see how this is uh, placed in a diagram first of all the heart okay heart is going to be filled with blood because the openings will allow blood to come in which are called as the ostia okay what were those openings called as don't forget the names of the openings those were called as ostia all right now the heart will undergo contraction contractions can be called as systole okay contractions all right once the heart contracts all the blood is going to enter into the aorta so once blood enters into that aorta aorta will allow the blood to travel from the chambers of the heart all the way up to the head sinus okay it enters into that head region and from that head region okay so we see here from aorta opens into the head sinus then when this is all happening at that time the heart is being emptied from blood and that is when the heart will begin to relax so the heart will undergo diastole and the heart is relaxing at this time now from the head sinus blood is going to enter into those two 
different chambers. Which are they? First being the perivisceral sinus and second being the perineural sinus. So, in these two chambers, blood will enter and from these two chambers, blood is eventually going to travel back into that very first chamber which was called as the pericardial sinus. And from this pericardial sinus or you can call it as a part of the hemocele, okay. So, you can call it as hemocele here. And from this hemoseal, blood will eventually enter back into the heart and that is what is how or that is how the circulation of blood in the body of the cockroach is completed. So, you can see here how it starts from pericardial sinus, enters into the heart through ostia, enters into aorta, takes it to the heart, takes it to the head. From the head, it enters into both the cavities, the middle and the lower one. From there, goes back into the uppermost chamber, uppermost dorsal pericardial sinus and it circulates again and again. Who is, who is the one which is going to take out the waste from that blood? The malphigian tubules. Who is the one that is going to put nutrients into the blood? The ventriculus. Okay. So, remember these terminologies too. Now, this marks the end of the circulatory system of the cockroach. All right. Now, in our next lecture, we'll be going ahead. We'll be learning about the respiratory system of the cockroach. So, children, stay tuned with me and until our next lecture, that is, that will be in the next week, same time. And uh, if at all there are any doubts which you have during these lectures or about any topic in zoology, do come into our Yup Master app and there is a live uh, on doubt session where I'll be personally taking care of any of your zoology doubts. All right. So, uh, if, you, if you found this lecture helpful, then go ahead and uh, give me a like here and share and subscribe to our channel too. Till then, take care and bye-bye.